Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another episode. We are sitting in the boat starting to prep for a major tournament. That is right, the Wednesday nighter. Hank, Duke, and I will be going out on uh, the local river tonight to fish a little Wednesday night derby. So I started to prep some rods because to be honest with you, my tackle is in disarray. I've got the Potomac River that I'm leaving for in a couple of days and I need to get everything ready. So I need to put new line on a pile of things. Uh, it's just, I've, I've got a lot of rods that I have not changed the line now pretty much since Lake Okeechobee. I've got a lot of rods that uh, at this point just are down to not much line and need a new line put on. And I know all of you out there are like, well, you get free line and blah, blah. And I do get some line, but I don't get all the line out there. And I'm not one to just re-spool for the heck of it. I re-spool when I need to re-spool. And the reality is I've got a lot of rods and a lot of rods that are for specialty purposes. So because of the way the schedule lays out, the rods that I rigged for Okeechobee are kind of specialized towards Okeechobee. You know, the lakes I went to after that, I would probably say half the rods that I rigged for Okeechobee, I have not used really until maybe this past week starting to fish up here in Wisconsin because we're starting to get some weed growth and things happening that are very similar to Florida fishing. Uh, and vice versa, at Florida, I don't think I even took a spinning rod. So a lot of my spinning rods weren't even rigged up and, and spooled up and ready to go until one or two tournaments into the season, which means... I've only used them for maybe one or two tournaments. And even at those tournaments, I may not have thrown them. So uh, just because I get line uh, at a good discount or, you know, sometimes in some instances I do get line for free. The point is I'm not just going to spool up and, and toss it out after each tournament like I know some anglers do. Because the reality of it is if it's still good, why would I throw it out? That's my take on it. But I do get a pile of questions regarding the fishing lines that I use and when I like to use them. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a background because I'm sitting here starting to get my lines out and talk to you about when I like to use certain types of line. And to be honest with you, I'm willing to bet that there's a lot of you out there that will completely disagree with my approach to this. Quite all right. That's okay. Everyone should stick to the fishing lines that they feel most comfortable with. But I will tell you right off the bat that, in my opinion, braid on bait casters is not generally a good thing for me. I don't like braid uh, unless I'm using it for pitching. Like, ooh, I just hit you. Like this one right here. This is braided lines. I'm talking straight braid for the most part, but. In most cases on my baitcasting gear, I don't ever have braid as a, as a main line to a leader of any form. But I do feel like braid is absolutely critical when flipping heavy vegetation. Now I say vegetation because I'm talking specifically about plant life, not trees. I don't like flipping trees, laydowns, bushes with braided line. Now I know that braided line is the most uh, abrasion resistant and it's the strongest stuff out there but my issue when I'm fishing wood with it is oftentimes the braid actually saws into the the wood that I'm fishing uh, now I will generally go to a higher strand count braid so my wood flipping braid is going to be generally the Berkley X9 which is a nine strand braid so it's smoother and it does not saw as much as my braided line that I use for fishing around grass and vegetation, which is the X5. It feels much more like a woven, you know, a rope. You can feel the, the ridges because it's only five strands. The thing is braid as a whole though, generally cuts into wood. So you end up getting snagged a lot of times because your line sawed into a wet piece of wood that can create a lot of hassle. Now, if you're flipping vegetation, that braid cuts right through that grass amazingly well. And it's critical to being able to keep pressure on the fish and get a good hook set. But as a whole, that's the only time I like to use braid. Now I do use braid as a backing uh, or a main line on my spinning gear, but that has more to do with just being able to drive the hook home as well as have a little bit more sensitivity and be able to cast really light lures further 
But in all of those instances, I'm using a leader that is no shorter than 10 feet and generally about 20 feet long of just straight fluorocarbon. That's what you see on something like this. This is a Berkley X9 uh, braided main line that I then tie to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, and that's just, like I said, a lot of it just has to do with having the advantages of braid to cast further, but I still want the light fluorocarbon line because I'll get more bites on that. Uh, the majority of, so that's almost all of my spinning setups are gonna be that way. Um, I do use a few spinning rods that are straight fluorocarbon, which are gonna be more for like my jerk baits and stuff, which I know a lot of you guys already think is crazy, but that's what I throw my jerk baits on. But then the majority of my bait casting setups, like this one right here, are going to be straight fluorocarbon. Uh, my go-to line size is 15 pounds. So if I'm fishing any sort of power, uh, like power fishing tackle or flipping and pitching tackle, it's gonna be 15 pound, unless say I'm flipping bushes, in which case I might go up to 20 pound. I generally don't ever go to higher than 20 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, but it's really my go-to is 15 pound. Now I will in very, very clear water drop down to 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, but I would be willing to bet you that 80% of my bait casters are rigged with 15 pound fluorocarbon. And then, uh, you know, the rest of the bait casters are either going to be 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, or they're going to be braid in one form or fashion for flipping heavier stuff. My spinning gear is almost all gonna be 10 pound braid mainline to a six or eight or maybe 10 pound fluorocarbon leader of 10 to 20 feet. And then I've got a handful of spinning rods that are gonna be straight fluorocarbon. Generally, they're gonna be six or eight pound test at that point. But I keep it really simple. I do carry line of almost every size with me, but generally speaking, I'm 10, I'll throw six and eight on spinning gear are my primary ones. And then I would say 15 pound is my primary on, on pretty much most of the bait casting with a little bit lighter in some cases, a little bit heavier in some cases. And then from a, a braid standpoint, I'm talking about generally a 10 pound for spinning and then it's gonna be 50 pound or more for flipping. And that's what I, I use the most of, that's what I go through a pile of, and that's what I'm starting to put on for the Wednesday nighter tonight. So hopefully guys, that kind of answers your questions. I, I think there's some other advantages to using, consistently using roughly the same pound test to you. I find personally that if I stick with say 15 pound on my bait casters, I have a much better idea as to how my baits are gonna react with that, as well as uh, I know what the breaking point of the line is. And it's just one of those things where from a consistency standpoint as well as an efficiency standpoint in the boat the last thing I want to do is have like 10 rods out and have them rigged with all different pound tests because what I end up finding is I'd rather have multiple different baits on the same pound test than one bait on one rod with the pound test that I want so from an efficiency standpoint it makes more sense to me as well but this was a question I've gotten a lot of. A lot of people always wanna know what pound test line I'm throwing. And generally speaking, I'm more on the light side than what I think the average angler is because I do think you get more bites with lighter line that is fluorocarbon versus uh, heavier line or braided lines. So that's where I'm at guys. I gotta get back to rigging some stuff up here because we only do have about an hour before I gotta get to the ramp. And uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this answers some of your questions. Hopefully my reasoning uh, it makes some sense and doesn't sound completely ridiculous, but uh, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate all of you watching and if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.